I accidentally dropped my Heiko FR301 off of my table. And as you can see here, it's got this big break up here by the heating element. At first I thought I was gonna have to buy a whole new one just for this broken plastic shell. But thankfully Heiko makes replacement shells for the FR301. I thought I would make a quick video about replacing the shell on my FR301. The first thing that we have to do is take the old shell apart and it looks like there's four main screws here that keep the two shells together. So let's go ahead and unscrew those. And just by judging where some of these parts are here, like the button to release the filter tube here, I think we want to take this side of the shell off first. It looks like the shells are kept in place by this yellow part at the top here. So let's try to see if we can take this yellow part off. Maybe this screw. Hopefully I don't mess something up. Oh, it looks like this little thumb screw is captive. It has a little washer that prevents you from taking it out. That's pretty neat. It looks like that's the little pump and the hose that actually provides the suction for the desoldering gun. Maybe now we can take it apart. Maybe I was wrong. It seems like there's some board that's on the other side. So let's try this side first. All right, so that's not fun. Uh, a bunch of parts fell out of it, so hopefully we can try to figure out how they go back together. There's two more screws here that keep this board attached to this side of the shell. Before we unscrew this board down here, let's take the broken piece of shell off of the nozzle part up here. I think there's four screws here at the corners that keep these parts of the shell on. There are two more screws here at the top and the bottom of the nozzle that I don't think need to come off in order to replace the shell. All right, now let's try to take this PCB here out. I can't take this PCB out yet because it looks like it's held in by this, maybe this is like a grounding screw here. So it looks like we're gonna have to unbolt the bolts from here in order to take this PCB out. All right, so I have a seven millimeter socket here. I'm gonna try to unscrew these nuts right here. Okay, there's one nut and then I can take off one of these grounding wire things. It looks like there's another one down here. Okay, then there was one more nut at the bottom. The only thing that's left, I think, is this little retention bracket that keeps the wire secure. Now I should be able to take this whole thing out and get rid of the old broken shell. Okay, now we have to worry about putting everything back where it's supposed to go. Let's start with this part of the shell here that has that screw and get these nuts back in. There was one at the bottom, so we can go ahead and put that one back before we put the wire in. Okay, I've got the wire put back, so let's go ahead and put that wire retention thing back in. And then the bottom ground wire. And finally, the top ground wire. With these wires secured, let's go ahead and secure the nozzle up here in the top of the shell. One thing you might notice is these wires are kind of tangled up. You wanna make sure that the wires are like this and not twisted around like this so that you've got plenty of space in the shell here when it goes back together. Then we're gonna stuff the ground wire underneath here. And let's secure the nozzle. Okay, now with the nozzle secured, let's go ahead and secure the PCB here. We're gonna need to put the little switch cover on the button here and it's gonna sit in a little slot right there. And then make sure no wires are being pinched anywhere, especially these ground wires down here. And then go ahead and secure the PCB with those two screws. 
We're almost in a spot to put the other piece of the shell back together, but let's talk about this potentiometer down here. If you go ahead and look at the knob, you'll notice that there's only numbers on one side. This potentiometer only turns one half rotation and not all the way around. So what I would do is I would put this potentiometer on there temporarily, and you can kind of turn it all the way one direction. When you turn it all the way one direction and then try to turn it back all the other direction, you wanna make sure that the numbers on the dial here are always visible on this bottom side here. If the numbers are visible from the side with the temperature markings down here, then you know you have this potentiometer on the right way. Next, we're gonna put this little nut that fell out earlier in this little slot right here. Okay, this next part is a little bit complicated. We're gonna put this yellow piece here like this. So we're gonna try to stuff this whole thing into this slot down here, but try to get the spring up here to get held by this little slot right there. So I'm gonna pull the spring back. That way when this gets pulled back, that spring stays on the right side of that notch. Okay, with that black piece on, let's go ahead and try to put the other side of the shell on. Just be careful that you don't lose the nut up here and that this black part doesn't pop out. All right, let's go ahead and screw the two halves together. Okay, now we can put this little black piece in the spot in the tube here. I think it just acts as like a strain relief. Then we'll go ahead and put the yellow piece on. And screw it in. Something must be wrong. When I pull this black piece back, this button should pop out and keep this black piece from springing forward again. So let me take this apart again and see what's wrong. While I was taking this back apart again, I noticed that there was this really tiny spring magnetized to the back of the pump down here. So if you're missing any of the metal pieces like the nut here or this little spring, check this magnet down here. So this is the missing piece. It goes over the top of this little knob right here and that will shoot out the button when we pull this black piece back. So let's go ahead and reassemble everything again. And before we do all the screws, let's test this. There we go. Last but not least, let's put these two screws up here to secure the nozzle to the other half of the shell. Then all I've got to do is put the filter back in. And let's go ahead and test one more time to see if this thing works. Seems pretty good. Now that we've got it all back together again, I turned it on and let's go ahead and test it out on this Neo Geo MV1C arcade board. I've got to replace all of these capacitors here, so let's go ahead and try to remove this one here. That was pretty easy. I hope that this video helps you fix your broken FR301 if you've broken the shell. If you're new to my channel, I do retro console mods just like this Neo Geo Open MVS mod I did here. So get subscribed so you don't miss any of my mod videos. I'll see you in the next video.